Hey everyone, and welcome back for another deep dive with us. This time we're going to take a look at uh, one of history's biggest icons. You know him, Benjamin Franklin. All right. But we're not just going to talk about the kite and the key, all that stuff everyone knows. We're going deeper. Right? Absolutely, yeah. We're using his autobiography this time okay. to find some really surprising things about his life. And get this, see how it can connect to being better thinkers today, maybe even better decision makers. What do you think? Well, that's what's so fascinating about Franklin, right? I mean, most people, they know the famous inventor, the statesman. Right, right. But his autobiography, it's like opening a secret door. You see this whole other side, a guy who is just all about self-improvement, always trying to learn, always trying to grow. Yeah, and it starts early, right? <laughs> I mean, picture this. Young Ben, stuck in this apprenticeship he can't stand. And what does he do? Sneaking off, reading every book he can get his hands on, like they're going out of style or something. It's true. Even back then, this guy was serious about learning, about teaching himself. Have you ever tried to teach yourself something totally new? Oh, all the time, yeah. It's not easy. <laughs> no, it's really not. And it speaks to Franklin's, I don't know, innate curiosity, that drive that he had even as a young guy. But he didn't just, you know, read everything and that's it. He was always looking for ways to use what he learned. Like, remember that writing program he made for himself? He'd take prose, turn it into verse, then back again. Yeah. Wild, right? It's like some kind of 18th century brain hack. Nah. Makes yeah. you think, what could we learn from that today? Yeah. You know? Well, I think it shows that deliberate practice, you know, that's not just a buzzword. Franklin was on to that, like, way before it was cool. This wasn't just a hobby for him. This was about getting good at persuasion, communication, and look where it got him, right? Absolutely. And, you know, this drive for self-improvement, it makes me think about those errata he talks about in the book, his mistakes, like leaving Miss Reed behind or that money trouble with Vernon. He doesn't hide from them. It's true. And those weren't just, you know, young and dumb mistakes. They were learning moments yeah. that shaped who he became, you know. And that's something we can all relate to, right? Why, for sure. I mean, who hasn't messed up? It's what we do after that counts. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, but speaking of learning and growing, we got to talk about Franklin's whole moral perfection kick. The 13 virtues, trying to live by those. I mean, I can barely remember to water my plants. This guy was on another level. It might seem a bit mush, I'll grant you that. But it just shows how serious he was about self-improvement. Right. It wasn't about being some kind of saint. It was about being better. Right, right. Progress, not perfection. He got that. And that's where the whole speckled axe story comes in, right? Exactly. Even Franklin, he had his struggles. Like, orderliness, apparently not a strong suit. Nope, not at all. And it's a good reminder for everyone, right? Striving for perfection. Sometimes it backfires. We've all got our things. The point is to keep improving, even if it's just a little bit at a time. You don't need to change everything overnight. So... I mean, think about it. What's one small habit, just one, that you could work on, like Franklin did with his virtues? This whole continuous improvement thing, it really shows up when you look at Franklin's public projects. You think about electricity, all that. But this is a guy who also cared about libraries and fire companies. Oh, absolutely. Street cleaning, even. Yeah. Like, if he saw a problem, he's like, all right, let's fix it, you know? What's really interesting to me is he didn't just see the problem. He had to find a way to fix it. And not just by himself. He knew how to get people together. Makes me think about the Gento, right? That group he started. They weren't just like a book club, were they? No, no, not at all. The Gento, it was like Franklin's think tank. You yeah. know, imagine people from all walks of life getting together, trying to solve problems. What could come out of that, right? It's a powerful model. So we've got Franklin the bookworm, Franklin the self-improvement guru, Franklin the, like, community organizer. Mm -hmm. And then there's the whole busybody thing, right? Using his writing to get people on board with his ideas. But it was more than just being a good writer, wasn't it? Oh, way more. It's like he understood how people ticked. He knew communication wasn't just fancy words. It was about knowing who you were talking to, what made them tick, finding that connection point. This makes me think about that story with General Braddock and the wagons. It's funny, but it's also kind of deep when you think about it. Oh, absolutely. So you've got Braddock, career military man, right? And Franklin's trying to warn him about Native American ambush tactics, but Braddock's not having it. Too proud, right. Exactly. So what does Franklin do? He doesn't argue. He just casually mentions how Native Americans use these really smart tactics, really effective. And guess what? Braddock ends up using some of Franklin's advice without even realizing it. It's like reverse psychology or something. It's all about framing, right? You don't win by being right. You win by getting through to the other person. Makes you think, how often do we miss that chance? Because we just want to prove our point. Totally. 
Okay, let's switch gears for a second. Franklin and religion. This might surprise some people because he wasn't exactly like super religious, but he definitely saw something in it. Yeah, it's interesting. He was a pragmatist at heart, right? And he could see how religious institutions, they brought people together, gave them a framework, even if he personally didn't buy into every single belief. But that practical approach, it didn't always fly, did it? Hmm. Especially when you're talking about like defending yourself, your community. Right. You're talking about the Quakers now, right, with their whole pacifism thing. Exactly. That must cause some friction. Big time. Remember that story about the fire engine? The one where they bought a cannon but called it a fire engine so the pacifists wouldn't get upset? Classic Franklin. That's hilarious. But it also shows this real dilemma, right? How do you stick to your principles when the world is messy and complicated? That's something we all deal with. You know, it's kind of wild when you think about it. We've talked about Franklin as this self-improvement guy, a master <laughs> persuader, community builder. It's like, how much can you fit into one life? It really is remarkable. You know, for me, it's that very variety that's so inspiring. The guy was into everything, science, public service, inventing. It makes you think, are we limiting ourselves, you know? He really did seem to embrace that whole lifelong learning thing. But, you know, for all his accomplishments, what gets me is how he was always trying to bring people together, especially in those times when everyone was at each other's throats. That's such an important point. It's easy to forget that side of him. But remember those articles of belief? He wasn't just talking about religion there. He was looking for common ground, trying to show people, hey, you don't have to agree on everything to work together. Which honestly feels kind of revolutionary these days, don't you think? Totally. And he lived it. You know, politics, diplomacy. He was always building bridges, finding ways to connect. So someone's listening to this, right, taking it all in. What's one thing they could take from Franklin, something to try out in their own life? Well, besides maybe that whole prose diverse exercise, honestly, I'd say just read the autobiography. It's not just history. It's like a master class in self-awareness, critical thinking, even communication. Like having a chat with the guy himself centuries later. And guess what? You can find a link to a free version in our show notes. So consider this your challenge, dear listener. Dive into Franklin's world. See what speaks to you. Maybe you'll even try those 13 virtues out for yourself. Or maybe, just maybe, you'll discover a passion you never knew you had, just like Ben. Now that's a deep dive challenge worthy of Franklin himself. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. Keep those minds curious. And remember, there's always something new to learn, just like our friend Ben did. Until next time.